Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is continuity. We are on the last of our four axioms for expected utility theory. We've covered completeness, transitivity, and independence previously, and now it's time for continuity. Like independence before it, continuity has to do with lotteries. Let's start off, however, by first looking at a set of preferences over outcomes with certainty. Our good old friend, million dollars, zero dollars, and dying a painful death. Here you prefer winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars to dying a painful death. These are rational and sensible preferences. My question to you, and this is an interactive question, is the following. Consider these two lotteries. Lottery 1 gives you one million dollars with probability P and a painful death with probability 1 minus P. Lottery 2 is a degenerate lottery. It awards you zero dollars with certainty. My interactive question to you is, for what value P are you indifferent between these two lotteries? I want you to think about that for a moment. If you have an answer, then go ahead in the comment section below your screen, type in your answer. What is the value P that makes you indifferent between these two lotteries? If you need some more time, go ahead and pause. Otherwise, let's advance forward and learn what continuity is. Suppose that you prefer X to Y to Z. Continuity says that there exists a unique P, some probability between 0 and 1, not including 0 or 1, such that you are indifferent between the lottery of X with probability P and Z with probability 1 minus P and Y with certainty. So to deconstruct that last little part, notice that X is your favorite outcome and Z is your least favorite outcome. Y is the middle outcome. What continuity says is that we can find a probability distribution that sometimes gives you your best outcome and sometimes gives you your worst outcome that is essentially equivalent to receiving your middle outcome with certainty. So you can see how that built in to the interactive question I gave you from before. As long as you were able to tell me what your P was, your preferences are continuous for this particular situation. Because million dollars is your favorite outcome, dying a painful death is your least favorite outcome, winning zero dollars is your middle outcome. So as long as you can tell me some value P that makes you indifferent between these two, and that P value is unique, then your preferences are continuous for this particular situation. If you weren't able to give me a particular value of P, that's a little bit strange. Some people might object, well, you know, any chance of death is not worth winning a million dollars. And one easy counter to that is to remind an individual that very often they probably get into a car and drive somewhere. Whenever you get into a car and drive somewhere, you're facing a non-negligible chance of death. And despite that, people are willing to go and drive somewhere without the possibility of them winning a million dollars. So if you're willing to drive a car and face that sort of risk of death, you're probably willing to take some very, 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 very small chance of death to win a million dollars. You know, maybe it's point zero 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 one of your chance for death, and that would make P equal to point nine 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 nine, and you get the idea. But nevertheless, there is some P, even if it's very large and one minus P is very small, that gives you this lottery that makes you indifferent between lottery one and lottery two. Now, that being said, there can be some violations for continuity. Basically, what continuity rules out is some sort of discontinuous jump or drop in your preferences over lotteries once you encounter the slightest bit of uncertainty. And in a lot of cases, like what I talked about in the interactive question, it's pretty strange to have a jump or drop in your preferences over lotteries like that, that rules out the possibility of some value P that makes you indifferent. But there is a single case where it kind of makes some sense, and that's something known as lexicographic preferences. Lexicographic preferences get their name because of the way the dictionary works, where you start off with every word that begins with A, and then you work to the second letter of the word, and you go from A to B to C and so forth, so you're organizing things alphabetically. With lexicographic preferences, you could think about this as buying a car, where you might be thinking about buying a Civic versus buying a Prius, and you prefer buying all Civics to all Priuses. But conditional on having a Civic, you have some sort of preference over the color of that Civic. 
And likewise, conditional on having a Prius, you have some sort of preference ordering over the color of your Prius. The specific type of lexicographic preferences that discontinu discontinuity rules out is a little bit more complicated than that. For us to not be able to represent preferences with an expected utility function, you would need to have lexicographic preferences over a continuum of outcomes on one dimension and a continuum of outcomes on another dimension. So the example that I gave you with a car doesn't actually work. You know, color might be continuous in what you can get, but having a car that's not uh, continuous in the type of car that you're getting. The model of car is either a Civic or a Prius. There is no continuous range between Civics and Priuses. So that's ruled out. But you could see how continuity is really important for the study of expected utility. If we go back to these two lotteries, think about what we've seen with mixed strategy Nash equilibria. For us to be able to get mixed strategy Nash equilibria, we need to make an individual indifferent between two lotteries, essentially. And when there isn't this value P that makes an individual indifferent between lottery one and lottery two, then there's no way of constructing that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which would put us in deep trouble if we're interested in finding equilibria, which is exactly what we're trying to do as game theorists. So that's a summary of continuity, and that takes us through all four of the axioms of expected utility. So in the next lecture, I'll start talking about what we can do with that and what sort of restraints and constraints that we have on expected utility functions, conditional on having an individual follow all of these preference rules. Hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you next time. Take care.